So after some wait, Nvidia has finally released its RTX 3050, an entry-level RTX 30 series card that is aimed for 1080p gaming and of course, to bring ray tracing and DLSS to users at a more affordable price range. This time, we managed to get our hands on this, the RTX 3050 Twin Edge OC from Zotac for a quick run so we can get a better look at what kind of performance we can expect from the RTX 3050. Now, design-wise, the RTX 3050 Twin Edge OC. It's a very compact card, so it can easily fit into most of the case nowadays, especially for ITX build, which is seemingly popular nowadays. As for the cooler, it features two cooling fans and a heatsink that has three heat pipes, which spans through an array of aluminum heatsink. Now, for the display output, yes, you'll be getting the usual which is three display port and one HDMI. So you're not lacking anything when it comes to the display output. As for the power requirement, according to Zotac's official website, the RTX 3050 Twin Edge OC will require a 450 watt power supply to run, which is very reasonable, I would say, because a 450 power supply is not that expensive as compared to a 650 because some users might have limited budget when it comes to building their gaming PC. So now let's take a look at the main highlight of the video, which is the performance of this card. So for our game performance test, we will be using this test bench. You can see the list right here or somewhere. And we also compare the performance of the RTX 3050 against two cards of our choice, which is the 1660S or 1660 Super and the RTX 2060 so we can get a better idea on what kind of performance this card can deliver and the position of it compared to the existing options we have nowadays. And with that being said, we will be testing all the three cards using a few selected titles we have so we can get a better idea on the performance between all the three cards for you to make a better decision if you plan to get yourself one in the coming future. Now, starting off with the raw raster performance, you can see that the 3050 is just a little bit more powerful than the GTX 1660 Super, but it's still not powerful enough to actually overpower the RTX 2060. And for title that is more demanding on the graphical performance, well, if you look at the chart we have here, you can see games like Watch Dog Legion, Cyberpunk 2077, Metro Exodus, those that require a bit more juice from the card. All the card actually suffers quite a lot from ultra graphical settings. So in order to get that standard 60 FPS experience, it's best to go with probably high settings, just tone down it a little bit so you can get a better overall gaming experience. Now, moving on to the ray tracing performance. Since the 1660S kind of cannot support ray tracing properly due to the lack of proper hardware like RT and Tensor Cores, which is only available on the RTX cards, we will be taking it out from the equation this time and compare the performance between the RTX 3050 and the RTX 2060. So going straight off with just the ray tracing enabled without DLSS is something that you should avoid doing so because they're not that capable when it comes to going head on with ray tracing settings enabled without DLSS. So you can see how important DLSS is when it comes to games that has ray tracing features available. Well, of course, there are games that only come with FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution. For those kind of games, well, your only choice is to go with what's available. So for those games, just do what you think is best for the game as long as you feel comfortable with the frame rates. As for the games that actually comes with ray tracing support and DLSS ready, just go with DLSS. And if you go with Ultra, well, Sorry to say that it's not something that both of these cards, the 3050 and 2060, is capable of if you're going for Ultra. 
So same as our raster performance comparison just now, I will recommend you to tone down the settings to probably high or perhaps even medium if you want a reasonable 60 FPS frame rate for better overall gaming experience. And yes, I do know that some of you who doesn't really fawn with the ray tracing enable because during some intense gaming session, you won't even notice all the lighting that's going on around you, let alone the reflection. So if you don't want to enable ray tracing, well, you can still enable the DLSS there because it actually helps to boost the gaming performance thanks to the existing hardware that supports that, which is the Tensor Core. So might as well just make use of this very useful feature as long as your game support that. So that's for the gaming's performance. And moving on to the temperature and power draw, well, I'm actually quite surprised that the power draw is a bit lower than what they stated in the specification, which is around 120 or 121 watts. So that's not too bad for what the RTX 3050 can actually deliver. And even during heavy load, the highest temperature we can see from the 3050 is actually somewhere around 71 degrees Celsius. So that's not too bad, I will say. Looking at the size of the cooler itself, and of course, the fan hum that's very noticeable from a short distance, I'll say it's a fair trade-off for the design and the power draw. And with the low power draw, I'll say it's really a good choice for gamers who are on the budget and only will go for 1080p gaming because it's a very good steal for some users who doesn't really aim for high-powered PSU. So that's something for you to consider if you fall in that category of user. Now, for the conclusion, honestly, I don't really have much to complain about this card because I don't have high expectation when I first start to test this card and after seeing what it's capable of, I'm not disappointed as well. Performance-wise, I will say it's still not the level of 2060 kind of performance which I've expected or some of you might expect it for sure, but hey, when it comes to the rest of performance, it's still more powerful than the 1660 Super. So that's pretty good enough. And let's not forget about the DLSS, which is very, very useful for a lot of games nowadays. Looking at more and more games is adapting DLSS into their engine, thanks to Nvidia, I guess. And of course, the developers. And looking at how things is progressing, I would say, DLSS really has a bright future and Nvidia seems to be going on the right direction. So be sure to stay tuned for more games that come with DLSS in the future and you'll be able to make use of your tensor cores on your RTX card. And now down to the price. Yes, majority of the graphics card we see nowadays will not be sold at the MSRP as stated by the official regardless of the brands. Well, that's not a lot of things we can like expect because price is going to go up anyway. But compared to existing options that is around the price range, yes, I'm talking about the card from the competitor, which is the RX 6500 XT. Well, both cards is at almost similar price range. Performance-wise, it's very easy for us to say that the 3050 wins in pretty much all the category. So if you have that kind of money, I will recommend you to go with the 3050 without any doubt. So yes, that's our experience sharing with you guys regarding the performance of the RTX 3050. Do let us know what you do you think about the RTX 3050. Will you get one or will you not? And that's all for the video today. I hope this gives you a better idea on what the RTX 3050 is all about. Do give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And of course, if you have any other recommendations or comments, do let us know in the comment down below as well. And that's all for today. I'll see you guys in the next video.